Hello, Screamer, and welcome to Scream Stream, your weekly spoiler-free guide to digital horror entertainment. I'm your host, James Gass. If you're new to the show, what I do is review a horror movie from one of the various streaming services. Uh, I'll also cover horror news, video games, and new releases of the week. You can find Scream Stream in Apple Podcasts, Pocket Casts, Spotify, Overcast, and anywhere else podcasts are served. And I believe we are now in iHeartRadio. Uh, if you'd like to support ScreamStream, head over to ScreamPod.com and click the Donate via PayPal button. Uh, any contribution you make will help keep this show going. Uh, my wife likes to remind me each month of how much I'm spending on ScreamStream, so if you can help me out, that would be amazing. Uh, this week's top supporter is Eric Vasquez, mainly because it was his idea for me to set up the link. Uh, Eric has been listening to Scream Stream since the very beginning of the show, even back when I was doing Southern Beer Review. So Eric, thank you so much for, for supporting the show uh, and sticking around with me throughout the past three three years or so uh, of me doing uh, Scream Stream. Uh, almost four years now. So Eric, thank you so much. Again, if you'd like to be a supporter of, of the show, head over to ScreamPod.com and just click that donate button. So we are now into week three of Scary Christmas, and this week I'm going to be reviewing Christmas Evil from 1980. Uh, now next week, uh, I will be doing Krampus as my main review, but since there are several Christmas-themed horror films that I didn't get to review, I will kind of do like my top five Christmas horror films of all time, and I'll run down that list. Uh, and kind of go through those next week. Uh, and next week, actually, next week's episode will be released on Christmas. And I think what I'm going to do is, because normally I record the show on Sundays and then post on Mondays, I will probably be recording early. So I don't know if I'm going to do news next week, but we'll see. Also, I might not be able to do new to streaming because there is no like solid day for websites to release new releases like they they all just kind of sprinkle here and there throughout the week like i know shutter they do some in the beginning of the week and some at the end of the week and netflix normally netflix will do their norm, new releases on mondays um, but i think they do a couple throughout the week uh, and amazon i have no idea i don't know when they add new stuff i just found out that they put it comes at night on prime so I don't ever know about them. But next week, it should still be a really fun show, especially with my top five Christmas horror films of all time. Uh, but for now, let's get into Christmas Evil. This was originally known as Better Watch Out, but if you watch the, the Blu-ray done by Vinegar Syndrome, there's a commentary by the director, uh, Louis Jackson and John Waters, and they talk about how the film, the, the title of the film was changed without Lewis Jackson even knowing that the producers just changed the title to Christmas Evil. I think it probably should have been stuck as, uh, it probably should have stayed, better watch out. Uh, but this film is also known as, or John Waters said, this was his favorite Christmas, Christmas film. So as I mentioned, this was written and directed by Lewis Jackson. This stars Brandon Maggart. Jeffrey DeMunn and Diane Hull, and for a brief synopsis, a toy factory worker, mentally scarred as a child upon learning Santa Claus is not real, suffers a nervous breakdown after being belittled at work, and embarks on a yuletide killing spree. So let me start off with acting. Uh, Brandon Maggart, who played Harry, did a fantastic job at this character because he really legitimately seemed like he was normal at first mostly normal normal at first and then kind of had just over the course of the film you slowly start to see him break down i don't think there was like a moment where it was just a complete breakdown it was it it was gradual and i think that's where most of the content of the film comes in was just him reaching the final breaking point so he did a really good, really great job. Jeffrey DeMunn played his brother, who wasn't in the film a whole lot, but his acting was pretty good as well. 
he was the brother who just kind of was really frustrated. The older brother who, you know, looked down on, on Harry, but I, I thought he did a good job in that role as well. So let's talk a, a little bit about the story. The story starts off like this. A mom and her two children are sitting on the stairs watching Santa put his uh, presents away or put put uh, Christmas presents under the tree. And they're all sort of just mesmerized by, by Santa. And when he's done, uh, he goes to the chimney, puts his finger on the side of his nose and goes up the chimney. I don't know how they pulled that off. But he went up the chimney, and when the brothers went to bed, the older brother told Harry, or the older brother Philip told Harry that Santa wasn't real, and Harry got mad. So he went back downstairs because he heard some noises, and he saw Santa Claus uh, filling up his mom. (laughs) And essentially, in that moment, he realized two things. A, uh, (laughs) Santa's groping his mother. And B, Santa really was his dad. I think that just really just shook him to the core. And when you're a kid and you find when that that moment you find out that Santa isn't real, hopefully you're not listening to this podcast with your children. But when you find out that Santa isn't real, that's like that's devastating, man. That's like one of the worst things, one of the worst realizations you have when you're a kid is is Santa Santa does not exist anymore. Uh, and so Harry goes up to the basement or up to, up to the basement. He goes up to the attic and finds like the snow globe and smashes it and then cuts his hand. And then we cut to Harry as a grown man and he has all this Santa Claus stuff around. And then you, you start to think, okay, something's not quite right. But when you see him at work, he's completely normal. Uh, so he is one of those types of people that's like really like he's a pushover. And so one of the guys asks him to cover or kind of just like basically forces him to cover for him so that he can go on a fishing trip and they want to leave that night. And Harry gets stuck in a covering the night shift. He was a manager. Now he's back on the line. Not really what he wanted to be doing that night. And on his way home, he saw that guy at the bar, and that's a, that was the first moment where uh, he he thought, okay, I'm done. Something's got to change. And from that point on, Harry starts to break down. And interestingly enough, the first kill doesn't actually come until 50 minutes into the movie, and it takes a while to build up to it. But when it does, man, it's like, it is, yeah, right in the eye. It is violent and it is gruesome, and it the effects weren't really that great, but still, it's like heck yeah. So it was, it was, it was well done. And from that point on, there's not really a whole lot of killing, but there's a lot of tense moments, and, and uh, there's there's some nice suspense in the film. So I still would categorize this as a horror film, but it's more of a suspenseful kind of film, more of a a thriller, I I guess, but still a really well done film. The ending though, I'm not going to spoil it. Don't worry. But the ending was the, one of the weirdest things I'd have ever seen in my life. When the ending came, the only thing I could think was, is this actually happening? Is this really happening or is this somebody's dream? Like this is just too ridiculous to be real. And and when the movie ends, you're just like I I don't know what happened there. Things were cool all the way up until this moment and you're just like what? What did I just see? So overall, I like the film. It was it was actually really good. So this is only available on Shutter right now. If you don't have Shutter, you can sign up for a seven-day free trial. I think it's a seven-day free trial. And there's probably some codes out there where you can get a full 30-day free trial. If you want, just do the seven-day free trial and watch this film because it is worth it's worth watching. I really enjoyed it. I thought the cinematography was really good. And again, you know, we're talking about the 80s. And the 80s back then, they all had sort of like this classic style of filmmaking where things just looked 
like it wasn't over stylized shots were were simple but effective uh and i thought aesthetically the film looked great i thought the 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 direction was good overall the story was was really nicely written i just i liked the film i thought it was good up until the end man i still don't know what to think about the ending it that one boggles me and when you watch the film you'll understand what i'm saying and if you have already watched it then you probably do know what i'm talking about it's weird it's really really weird but it's a fun film to watch and at points it it, it gets pretty serious so it's never one of those films like uh it's never overly goofy or overly funny like you're watching this guy literally have this breakdown and he's going crazy again just a really great story and i love the film this is going to be one in one of my christmas favorites that go into rotation Uh, right now i have a few that that i like to watch every year this is now one of them just a really good film yeah so this is available on amazon uh, on Blu-ray from Vinegar Syndrome, the multi-format is 1970, yeah, it's 1971. <laughs> so it's $19.71. Uh, I think it is probably worth it with the bonus features. You get a new 4K resolution of the film from the original 35 millimeter elements. Uh, you get three commentary tracks, one with Lewis Jackson and Brandon Maggart and John Waters. Uh, there's archival interviews, deleted scenes, actor screen tests, a lot of different features on this one. So uh, if you don't want to do the whole shutter thing, I would recommend that you pick this one up. And you know, the reason why I haven't really watched this earlier was the cover art doesn't really match the film. I I, I think the cover art's not very good because it has like the Santa Claus on it, who's green, it looks kind of zombie-ish. I think it gives the film the wrong kind of, or sets you up for like the wrong kind of film. This isn't a supernatural film. It is, it's a guy who breaks down. But again, I mean, it's a good film. Pick it up on Blu ray, it's 1971, or you can watch it on Shudder. It currently has a 5.2 on IMDb. I think that is really, really low. That's, that's not good at all. That's, that's a really bad rating. This film is a lot better than that. I I think it deserves at least a six. So I'd give it a six out of out of ten or six and a half. Let's go six and a half. Six and a half out of ten recommend it. So there you go. There's my review of Christmas Evil. Let's move on to some news. First up, director revealed for Goosebumps sequel. If you haven't seen the Goosebumps movie, this one came out uh 2015, I think. And I actually really enjoyed this film. It's made for teenagers, but I loved it. I loved Jack Black as R.L. Stein. I loved the overall story of the boy meets new girl neighbor, and they start to kind of hang out. And R.L. Stein is is doesn't want that. He he wants his daughter not to go outside, not to socialize with anybody. It's real. He's a real weird dude in the film, uh, but overall the story is really good. I enjoy that film a lot. If you haven't seen it go check it out but they are doing the sequel and the sequel is rumored to be out september the 21st of 2018 uh, next year and right now it's just being called goosebumps 2 and it's going to be directed by ari sandel and this filmmaker won an oscar for uh, his 2007 short film west bank story uh, sandel more recently directed the high school comedy the duff uh, he did a time traveling romance film called When We First Met, and he was also previously announced to helm the live action adaptation of the Mattel toy line Monster High. So he hasn't really done a whole lot of things, but he did win an Oscar for a short film. Uh, so I don't know what to expect with this one. Hopefully, it's going to be good. Depends on who's writing it, but we'll have to wait. And as the article says, we'll have to wait and see what shape the sequel will take. But in the meantime, it's great to be a fan of R.L. Stein as multiple movies based on uh, Fear Street books are also in development. I never read Fear Street. You know, I read Goosebumps, uh, but I never read Fear Street, and I heard Phil's Fear Street was sort of more uh, late teenager involved where characters actually got killed off. So I'm interested to see what they do with that series. I do like the TV show adaptations, though. I like Goosebumps show. 
I liked The Haunting Hour. And there was another one, I think, uh, another one of his shows that, that was, uh, or another one of his series that was made into a show, I think, but I'm not real sure, but I think they're all on Netflix. I know The Haunting Hour is, and I know Goosebumps is. So, but I'm ca- I can't wait to see this one because I did like that first movie. Uh, next up, st- Netflix to stream Mike Flanagan's shelved horror movie Before I Wake. Now, I remember seeing this trailer last year and it looked really good. It was kind of a- about this kid when he goes to sleep, his dreams actually come to life. I think that's what I remember from it. Uh, and it t- makes a or it, it takes a really dark turn. I was really excited to see that movie. It never came out, and I completely forgot about it until I saw this article where Netflix is actually going to put it on their service uh, next year. I know this is in their 2018 lineup, but I don't know when it's going to be up there. Uh, So Mike Flanagan, if you don't know who he is, he also did the film Absentia, which was absolutely amazing. I loved that movie, and it came out uh, in 2013. 13 or 14. It might've been 13. Uh, but then he also did Ouija or origin of evil, which was a sequel to the first Ouija movie, which was a terrible movie, but his sequel apparently was really good. It got a lot of really good reviews. I haven't seen it yet. I do want to see it. So before I wake is already completed. It's been done since 2015. Uh, but I guess they had some financial setbacks. I know there was a bankruptcy with one of the production companies uh, from Rel- uh, relatively Relativity Media, I believe. But it's finally coming out to Netflix. And I'm super excited to see this. And I will keep you up to date as more news develops. Actually, wait, you know what? Uh, January 5th. Oh, next month. <laughs> next month it's coming out. Awesome. So I just happened to see the rest of the story. But yeah, next month it's going to come out. Uh, I am super excited for this. Also, it looks like Flanagan is uh, developing a series, a horror series for Netflix, which is going to be a 10-episode remake of the classic ghost story, The Haunting of Hill House. If you haven't read that book, that is a really good book. I do recommend it. And I'm pretty sure this, yeah, this is the one written by Shirley Jackson excellent book i own the first uh, the first film from 1956 i think or 60 i don't remember when that film was made i think it was 56 great great film the one at the one that we got in like the the 2000s the haunting or yeah the haunting terrible movie i hated that movie it's was, it was just really bad but anyway i like to see what mike flanagan does with with that property he is a great director, and I love I love his work so far. All right, and then finally, for my last bit of news here, Guardians of the Galaxy's James Gunn is finally returning to the horror genre. Now, James Gunn, he is the director behind Guardians of the Galaxy, Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Uh, he's also done several other pretty big films, and he got his start. I think he, he got his start with Troma Pictures. Uh, with uh, Lloyd Kaufman over there. And I think that was, he kind of says that was his film school. So he's done a lot of horror films and then he moved on to do other projects. And, you know, I have to say guardians of the galaxy is that's like my favorite Marvel movie. Uh, yeah, probably my favorite Marvel movie, like right next to, to Deadpool. Uh, so I'm excited to see what he does. He's doing a film called The Viral Demon. Uh, and for a synopsis of this film, four college friends participate in an annual video chat that goes horribly wrong when an ancient evil imprisoned by witchcraft is inadvertently released. Witness the hellish first night of demonic possession as it unfolds in real time as the possessions multiply and the body count rises. Their night of fun becomes a race to stop evil before it can spread across the world through electronic means. Knowing who to trust is key to survival. And I think this is kind of like in the style of found footage or kind of like uh, through computer monitors. There's another movie that did that recently, like Friend Request or Unfriended or something like that. I forgot what it was. So I'm, I'm interested to see where this goes. 
Uh, again, I like James Gunn. I like his films. There is a trailer, or it's well, it's more of a, a teaser trailer. So yeah, I can't wait to see that one. All right, so that's going to wrap up the news. Let's move into some new releases. And I'm going to start off with my Blu-ray releases. First up, we have uh, Game of Thrones released season seven. Now, I normally wouldn't put Game of Thrones in my horror show, but I mean, it's Game of Thrones. I love that show. It's just so good. And season seven just came out on Blu-ray. Uh, and it comes with like a little animated movie, uh, like an extra disc. Uh, and they also put out the complete series seasons one through seven in a massive box set. And that thing is probably expensive. Uh, also arrow put out a uh, house special edition house and house two. Uh, and if you haven't seen these films from the eighties, I recommend both of these. The first one was, was fantastic. The second one was not as good as the first, but still worth watching. And arrow has a or has done special releases uh, or collector's editions of both of these films uh, with a ton of content. Uh, they each have brand new 2K restorations from the original film elements. They have high, def high definition Blu ray presentation, uh, um, original mono, stereo, and DTS HD 5.1 audio options, audio commentary with uh, director Steve Miner producing. Producer Sean Cunningham and actor William Cat, uh, as well as screenwriter uh, Ethan Wiley. There's a documentary called Ding Dong You're Dead. That's a great title. Making of House. Uh, it's a brand new documentary. Uh, there are a vintage making of one that they did back in the day, still galleries, theatrical trailers, all kinds of cool stuff on both these discs. I highly recommend that you pick those up. They are available on Amazon for twenty one ninety nine each, or you can get uh, House Two Stories, which includes both discs in one uh, limited edition pack for forty seven ninety nine. Uh, but if if you haven't seen those films, they are great, and I do recommend them. Uh, and you know, Arrow, Arrow, and Scream Factory are my two favorite uh, distribution companies. They do some amazing work with all these discs, so. If you feel inclined to do so, pick those up because you won't regret it. I promise. Also, uh, the Premon the Premonition was released. I uh, don't know a whole lot about this movie. Beyond the Power of an Exorcist, the mid 1970s saw the rise in popularity of films centering on the subject of parapsychology, led by Carrie Brian De Palma's classic tale of te telekinetic terror. Precognition or future sight would be the topic under exploration in Robert Allen. Sh schnitzer's contribution to the psychic craze the chilling and much overlooked their premonition i've never seen this film uh, i heard the folks talk or the folks from shockwaves talk about it they recommended recommended it so maybe i will see if i can find this film and, and watch it it was just released on blu-ray from arrow uh, also beware the lake breckenmore uh, I saw the trailer. I think that's actually available to stream on Amazon Prime. Uh, Hollow Creek, K Shop, Once Upon a Time at Christmas is another sort of Christmas slasher film. Uh, One of Us, Poltergeist Encounters, The Rift, The Snake Woman, and True Love Ways. And onto streaming. Not a whole lot happening on streaming. But as for next Netflix, uh, Red Christmas is uh, streaming. I started watching this film. I haven't finished it yet, but what man, what a bizarre damn film this was. It starts. Okay. So this movie is, is about D Wallace had an abortion, a late term abortion and somebody there at the clinic, there was a bombing, uh, but somebody had picked up the, the fetus and it was pretty much a, a, a whole baby by the time she got aborted. And I guess he raised this fetus and it comes back 20 years later with a letter to his mother and just wants to be accepted. And they all freak out her and the entire family freak out and throw it out of the house. And then he comes back with a vengeance. I haven't finished it yet, but what a bizarre movie. It's so weird. Uh, I, I don't know if I can recommend that one or not. Watch like the first 35 minutes and you'll know if you're going to like it or not. Uh, the hatred is on Netflix. Now this one, I saw the trailer for, I do want to watch it. It looks interesting. Uh, Ash versus Evil Dead seasons one and two 
just came out on Netflix on the, the 11th. I had somebody, I had two people try to tell me that season one was already there and has been there. I'm just, I, I couldn't argue with them. I, I just let them have it. But season one and two are there. Go watch that. Uh, Rise of the Zombie, that looks really cheesy. I do not plan on watching that movie, but it's there if you want to see it. Uh, on Shudder, we have a few good things. Uh, Violent Cop, Exeter, which is also on Netflix, I think. Uh, Little Aaron Merriweather, The Day. Grace, which was done by Aeroscope Entertainment. Uh, Aeroscope is Adam Green's production company. I've been wanting to see this one for a while. I haven't been able to find it, but it's now on Shudder. Uh, Chained and The Child's Eye. Again, you know, if you don't have Shudder, that's like probably my favorite service. So if you don't have it, sign up for like that seven-day free trial. I wish I had a code for a 30-day free trial, uh, but I don't. I apologize. I wish I could get one. But sign up for the seven-day free trial. If you decide to keep it, send them a message and say, hey, at James Gas on Twitter, told me to sign up for your service, and I did, and I love it. Uh, just let them know where you heard it from. And then finally on Amazon, I mentioned this earlier in the episode, uh, It Comes at Night is now streaming. I want to see this film. I don't know if it's a horror film or not. I've heard a lot of mixed reviews on it. Uh, I've heard people say it is a horror film, just not a typical horror film. So I'm going to watch this. And if I think it's horror enough, maybe I'll do a review of it. But I really want to see it. And it's finally on Amazon Prime to stream. So I will watch it and we'll see how it goes. So final announcement. I am not doing, I'm doing the Patreon thing, but it, you know, I've, I've had Patreon since 2014. So actually, well, since I started Screamstream, I've had my Patreon and I've only had one patron. Actually, I had two, but one of them left maybe for reasons beyond our control. Uh, but I've, I've always had one and that's really it. And I've always offered uh, extras through Patreon. Uh, and now I, since I'm, I'm probably not going to do the Patreon as much, I'll probably still update the extra stuff over there just for the one person. But, uh, I do have a hidden page on the website with all the extras. And I, I think what I'm going to do is just put it out there for everybody. Uh, and just, hope that you'll still consider supporting the show through PayPal uh, just because you enjoy the content and you'd like to help me out. Uh, so I think what I will do is I'll just put it up there. Uh, I've been uploading all of the uh, archive Scream Stream episodes to the website and I have it in a podcast format too. So um, there will be an RSS feed where you copy and paste into your, your podcast app, whatever you, you might use. So, and then I'll start doing the behind the scenes podcast as well. Uh, but I do want to encourage you to support the show. Uh, I am trying to do as much as I can, give you as much content as I possibly can, make it worth your while. Uh, so I do ask that you support the show through pay PayPal, head over to screenpod.com, click that donate button and any little bit or as much, it all helps uh, to keep the show going because it does cost quite a bit of money every month. So I do ask for your support. But if you'd like to keep up with me outside the podcast, you can do so at screenpod.com where you can find links to all my social profiles. Uh, on Twitter, I'm at James Gass if you want to follow me there. Uh, you can also subscribe to the podcast via your favorite podcatcher app and get show notes for each episode. And you can also uh, send me some suggestions if you want to uh, request a movie for me to review. There is a contact form there. Again, if you have a movie you'd like me to review, hit that contact form. Uh, remember to subscribe in Apple Podcasts, we're in Stitcher, we're in Pocket Cast, TuneIn Radio, we're in Spotify. I do like Spotify. It, it's kind of cool because sometimes uh, my Pocket Cast app doesn't always download new episodes. And instead of having to wait to download while I'm on Wi-Fi, I can just stream from Spotify. So I am in Spotify. You'll have to do a search for Scream Stream, but I'm there. Uh, and I'm also in iHeartRadio as well. Uh, and music for Scream Stream was created by Kevin McLeod over at Incompetech.com. Until next week, I'm James Gass saying, if it was real, the cameraman would be dead too. Good night. Good night.